Thanks for having us. Today I'll be going through some of the work that Dyla has done and uh, the tools we've built for the supporting the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. DIAL is housed in the United Nations Foundation in Washington, D.C. and was established in 2015 as an independent global alliance. Uh, we were funded by uh, leading development agencies and, and private foundations. Our role is to identify barriers to the use of uh, digital solutions and data in service delivery. We test ways to remove them uh, with public and private actors and uh, package solutions for others to use in service delivery. One of the tools we've developed to overcome these barriers is our online product catalog. In response to COVID-19, our online product catalog hosts a database of mobile service providers and open source products to support organizations quickly identify software platforms. So, one of the things that we realized were in our initial access to digital services. And so two questions came out. How can I deliver uh, messaging services? And I do have applications and how do I scale it to gov other government agencies? And so the question is, in your COVID response programs, have you seen these questions? Uh, do you think your colleagues in other ministries share the same kind of questions? regarding messaging and, and applications and platforms they provide. Uh, simply put, uh, there is technology, even though sector challenges are unique, there is tech to help them support that. Um, these questions resounded across ministries and agencies we engaged as DIAL, and when assessing concerns faced accessing mobile services, uh, there was the initial step to answer these questions, DIAL engaged in country workshops. So I'll hand it over to Diana now to talk more about the convenings uh, that we had conducted as well. Thanks, Diana, over to you. Thank you, Tanvir. Um, in the early stages of our um, development of our uh, messaging work, we had carried out field assessments in East and West Africa, engaging different partners across multiple sectors um, on the challenges and opportunities that they're facing in the use of uh, communication channels for development services. A lot of this work had been done um, uh, in the later part of last year, which I think really created, um, gave us the information and uh, the, the tools and, and understanding to really create uh, tools that can uh, serve um, the uh, mobile development partners, and then also bridge the gap in case of um, any emergencies, for instance, now uh, with the COVID pandemic. Our work in the country work involved a series of meetings and consultations with different partners um, across the whole ecosystem of uh, digital development. We spoke with donors, implementing partners, those are both international and local NGOs, um, mobile network operators, um, and in each country that we uh, in interacted, we tried to reach all the telcos in that particular country. Spoke with aggregators, both regional and country-based uh, aggregators, government agencies, so looking at um, from a regulator, regulator perspective, ministries of ICT were key particip participants, and the Ministry of Health as well. Uh, ministries of Agriculture, Education, I think those are ministries that um, in most of the gov uh, countries that we work in had um, made some steps in use of uh, technology compared to others. We also spoke with financial services, digital financial services um, practitioners and teams. And I think the difference with the financial services was that this, this was not just a channel, but it was also an enabler of uh, across these whole sectors all these um, sectors. We realized there was varying scope in use of core mobile channels. Most of them were around behavior change, um, providing alerts and notifications, especially around maternal and child health. Um, for agriculture, it was around weather and market prices. So th those are the main scopes that people used um, mobile communication, but health really stood out and uh, the notifications and alerts and behavior change are common areas that we saw that could be um, also relevant and applied in the COVID response. 
common challenges that um, came up across um, our work in the early stage of assessment. And this was um, mainly in uh, Malawi and West and Sierra Leone, which brought together West Africa and Eastern Africa, the wider Eastern Africa um, stakeholders was, we found that there was a big uh, issue with a lack of awareness of core mobile channels. So even just um, being in a position to understand how can I select which channel for which purpose? Um, which one is the best suited for uh, the purpose? Um, what are the main differences between SMS and USSD? What are the pros and cons, uh, for instance, across uh, these two different channels? And what are the technical implications when it comes to integration? How to acquire those channels? Um, how, to, how to select a short code, for example? Do I need a one-way or a two-way short code? Do I need a dedicated short code? Can I use a shared short code? So these are initial areas that a lot of the partners and implementers really struggled with when designing um, their products and implementations and also when trying to, uh, to figure out how to partner with uh, mobile operators or aggregators. Another big challenge we found was uh, the lack of understanding or just the poor visibility of partners at a, uh, at a national level. Um, for instance, a lot of NGOs were struggling with the question and government agencies as well, do I need to work with a mobile operator directly? Um, which of course would involve a lot of technical discussions from platform integration, um, product design, business, business models. Um, can I work with another partner, for example? And that is where uh, the opportunity that um, uh, aggregators really uh, play a key role in, as acting as intermediaries between mobile network operators and then government agencies and NGOs who want to use uh, mobile communication channels. Uh, but at the same time, um, for the mobile aggregators, for example, when we uh, spoke with them, there was a lot of uh, lack of awareness on their side also of the needs of government and the needs of uh, NGOs. And yet they provided a very good opportunity to reduce complexity uh, on technical integration with mobile operators because they already have uh, preset uh, business cases and business models They're already integrated with uh, all the telcos in a country. Um, for those partners who are working in one country, it was just as simple as just uh, connecting their platforms and switching the service on once, once this, the product was ready. And for others who are playing at a larger scale, at a regional scale, we also had regional aggregators who are able to provide access to these channels um, within a week um, or just days as well, which can be compared with the hassle of going through a um, short code application and administration and then technical integration with the mobile operators. So they provide, provided a ready platform uh, for the use of uh, core mobile channels across uh, for SMS, for USSD, for IVR, and even for payments, digital payments. The, the third issue we found was around uh, just lack of a common platform to engage and um, enhance collaboration of, uh, amongst partners. Uh, and for this now, we held a series of convenings, bringing together all the key uh, players in, involved in um, digital, uh, mobile communication channels use for development. And in both countries, for instance, that was the first time that all the key partners were present together in a room to talk about challenges in collaboration. Uh, issues that stood out was um, mobile not network operators, for instance, normally face the challenge of handling multiple requests from different NGOs on similar issues. So I think that exhaustion just made it very difficult for them to, to know how to position and design and engage with the NGO community. A lot of the aggregators had very little knowledge of NGO needs and how they're set up and how to market their services to them, for example, because previously uh, they've mostly been just been supporting on commercial uh, services and they had not considered the development sector or the government, the public, the public sector as a possible um, partner. Uh, in most of these countries also, regulators were normally left out um, of the discussions around uh, use of channels and how to acquire them. And yet they're the ones who are assigning and uh, um, short codes for these same services. 
so we saw that it was very important to for successful partnerships to take place um, across this wide uh, ecosystem at the ecosystem level there needs to be a very deep understanding of stakeholders and this is why we held um, several convenings just to bring these partners together and to discuss on the other two initial challenges on um, lack of awareness of the core mobile channels and just lack of understanding and poor visibility of partners we use these insights to create tools that uh, Tanvir um, would uh, Tanvir if you could ex uh, take over and just explain uh, the tools that you created as a result sure. thanks Diana so once we did the initial groundwork, we kicked off on identifying aggregators across uh, global aggregators through RFIs uh, to build a, a repository of aggregators. This also led to our work where we merged a lot of our, our decisions and solutions with the ICT for SDG uh, work where we managed to host our database of aggregators online. So currently on our product registry, you would not only be able to view the open source softwares that are available, uh, but you will also get a repository of aggregators uh, and be able to filter down by, by the country, uh, availability, the services they, that they offer, as well as the mobile operators that they integrate with. And the, here you can see is the landing page where we've mapped out aggregators and uh, we have covered the globe. Uh, we have aggregators providing uh, services in over 190 plus countries across the world. Uh, you, by selecting a country, you'll be able to see what aggregators are available within those countries. And uh, within, the, within the catalog, you'll be able to actually identify the, the, the aggregators once again. Within those aggregators, you'll be able to view their profile and be able to break it down by break down their services offered so for example in this situation we've, we've narrowed down to a country kenya where we're looking at what sms services the specific aggregator offers uh, they're integrated only to airtel but they offer uh, to sorry to airtel and safaricom and within safaricom they they provide us a slew of services uh, under the sms uh, service uh, also, our product catalog wa was was published together with the ITU, and uh, the guide uh, is for countries to use to identify digital solutions. Uh, working in, with sector experts, uh, for example, UNICEF Ventures and other UN agencies to develop uh, the digital public goods catalog of existing products within the market as well as provide our, our open source team, also provides technical and community governance services uh, to open source platforms. Uh, through our principles of digital development, we provide, uh, we are able to train NGOs and, and donors and governments on uh, developing digital solutions around uh, principles for digital development. So here, our online catalog, you'll be able to see a slew of catalogs uh, and be able to filter by either by building blocks, uh, SDGs as well. In response to, to COVID-19, uh, there are specific uh, products which you can actually narrow down to and then view, be able to view online. So we have our solutions such as SORMAS, which is a surveillance outbreak response management analysis system. And one of the other scenarios is where we are using our catalog to identify uh, data analytics and insights such as Flowminder. We're supporting dial in uh, contact tracing. By using mobile operator data, we're able to extrapolate population density movement patterns, as well as uh, possibilities of contact and uh, predictive scenarios of uh, possible disease spread. So to answer the main questions that we'd asked in the be beginning, can I deliver messages to people using an aggregator or MNO? We have our publications, which you can refer to, uh, giving you insight on how mobile capabilities, uh, on what channels are ap appropriate, as well as whether you should, uh, how to evaluate an aggregator and MNO services. Uh, our when we have an application and emergency response data annex can be used as a building block in other sectors. Once again, our product catalog will allow you to narrow down 
uh, your so solutions and services by building blocks or specific areas. That's it. Thank you. All right. Here is our first question. It's from Dr. Bunchai. Could you please explain the products that you introduced? Sure, uh, Alkin. So the products that we, we, we've introduced are, is our online product catalog, a tool uh, which contains a repository of open source softwares, as well as uh, a repository of uh, existing aggregators. Aggregators were integrated uh, with various mobile operators within a country, uh, providing you services, uh, mobile services, such as SMS messaging, USSD or IVR. Uh, whereas the soft software discovery part of the tool uh, allows you to identify the ideal open source tools that are available uh, to use for various uh, building as various building blocks for your solutions. I think if I can if I can just explain maybe how exactly you could uh, use them in a in a scenario is for a lot of the. In most countries, we've seen that digital channels are being used a lot just around uh, spreading um, messages on awareness of symptoms um, around uh, COVID. Uh, what are the steps um, that people need to take, uh, precautions just to keep themselves safe and to reduce the spread, and, and where to get information or uh, support in case they may suspect they have a case. When, when thinking about using uh, core mobile channels uh, and messaging channels for these purpose, a lot of partners are thinking around, okay, so should we, which channels should we use? For most of them, SMS is the, is the best go-to um, channel, for instance, because it has the widest reach in most countries and it doesn't break, um, for a lot of the, for, for people who have a feature phone and they may not have a smartphone, they'll still be able to get critical messages via SMS. Another channel that might be um, considered of use is IVR, for example, to make sure that people who are not able to read or write can still get critical messages. So as a government, for instance, once you have identified, okay, for, from a digital perspective, SMS and IVR may be the best channel for us to use to spread alerts and notifications, awareness messages around COVID-19, then the next step would be how do we um, integrate with mobile operators? So for the first, uh, on selection of the channels, the tool that we have shared um, is the mobile capability uh, model, which talks about, it breaks down all the core mobile channels to the, in very um, extreme detail on how to use it, how to acquire it, how to select it, uh, appropriateness of each channel for different situations, um, so it'll, for people who are, do not have uh, prior technical experience, for example, around um, telco platforms, it can be a very good guide to help on selecting uh, channels. Then the next stage would be, can I get an aggregator, for instance, who, if we need to spread the message across all telcos in one country, um, there's the option of working with mobile operators directly. There's also the option of going through an aggregator who has these um, technical platforms integrated already on the telco uh, network and would be ready to spread the message within one or two days. So that is where the second tool we have is a mobile aggregator guide, which talks about different aggregators, how to work with aggregators, what are the steps to integration. Um, and then once you've uh, gone to the online uh, catalog that Tanvir talked about, that can help you find out, okay, which aggregators are in my country who are they connected with and on which channels so that you can uh, have a seamless integrate um, uh, immediately con uh, contact the different aggregators and set up solutions. Thank you, Certain Beer and Ms. Diana. Our next question is from Dr. Tin Minswe. So are those apps ranked according to user recommendations on your platform or is it just a collection of apps? It's a, it's, it's a collection of open source apps which have been uh, rated uh, based on their and their usage as well. So we do capture certain forms of ranking, uh, which will be visible on on our on site. Great. Thank you, sir. I guess there are no more questions from our participants. Thank you, Sir Janvir and Ms. Diana. In case there are more questions from our participants, I will be connecting them to you. Is there any last words, Dr. Bunchai? 
thank you very much for uh, coming and give us the information. We really appreciate your contribution to the network, and we will, we will uh, ask uh, your, we will need your more expertise to inform our network in the future. Hope that you will be available for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bunchai, as well for having us as well. It was our pleasure, and definitely we are available whenever you beckon call. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Tanvir and Ms. Diana. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe.